Good morning. It is Friday, August 26, TGIF. I can't even tell you. We've had our first full week of school. I'm excited. So thanks for joining us. I am guest co-host Randy Ramsey of Southwest Alternate Media Project and an HCC adjunct. Todd Duplantis will join us in a little bit. But first, uh, here's how you find us on social media and TV. We are live on the Houston Community College District Facebook page and on YouTube and not HCC because there's too many of those. So we're also on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and on HCC TV at noon, 5, and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. Actually, Todd got here early. I'm super excited. Todd, good morning. How are you? Hey, Randy. How are you? I'm good. Obviously, hyper. Caffeinated. Yeah, well, you had your first full week of classes. How did that go? It's so great. I'm so excited to have the students back in class. They got their, they got their hands on some film equipment. That's always great. They've learned how to level a tripod. That seems like a skill. That's that's a skill in and of itself. Yeah, getting the tripod set up is a skill these days as well. I find myself challenged on There's that. Always at least one or two who are a little bit surprised by how befuddled they are by three legs and some levers. <laughs> that's exactly right. Hey, um, I know are are you seeing more students in classes now? Or I'm full. Or you're still online. You're full. Huh? My classes are full. We are maxed okay. out, and I'm super excited. That's good. It's good to yeah. see him back on the campuses again. Hey, um, we uh, we want. I know we want to get started in the show, but I, I want yeah. to introduce our second guest real fast. Bring him on if you yeah. don't mind. Uh, Alex Luster is uh, joining us, and Alex and I go back a few years. I, I don't know, Alex. When was the last time we actually saw each other in person? You didn't have a beard, so it had to be at least. 20 yeah, years ago? I don't know. Longer. Maybe 20. Maybe 20 yeah. years ago, yeah. Yeah, we worked together. You were the... Uh, you were the uh, eye in the sky. I was. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I flew around in a helicopter and told everybody where to go in traffic. So that went really well. Um, Alex, uh, you've got uh, The Story Hive. I see you on Facebook. And we're looking forward. It's Film Friday, so we appreciate you being our guest. But we're looking forward to hearing all about everything you have going on. Right. All right. I'm a huge Alex Lester fan. He's on our board at oh, Swamp. That's right. You so. guys, you, you guys are peeps. Y'all know each other. I forgot about that. Okay. It might be 20 years since I've seen him too. It's been a while. <laughs> we <laughs> never don't get to see each other anymore. But well, cool. All right, Alex, stand by. We'll be with you shortly. And uh, Randy, why don't you go ahead and uh, get started with our first interview? Sure. First, we're going to welcome two faculty members who have some bitty, pretty big shoes to fill. They're taking over the Puente program. Dr. Samantha Rodriguez and Sil I'm sorry, Sybil Davis. I'm having a moment with my mouth today. Both co-coordinators of the Bridge Puente program. Welcome to the show, Samantha and Sybil. Let's, I'm so excited, by the way, and I'm so excited by the program because I hadn't heard of it before today. So, you know, it's always good to hear a new thing. I'm so sorry. That is my puppy being a little bit crazy. Um, so let's begin with you, Sybil. Can you give us a description of the program for those of us who don't know anything? You're muted, Sybil. I'm sorry, Sybil. Oh, okay. There Can you, you go. Sorry. I apologize. Um, the Bridge Puente program is for students um, who want to excel in uh, both academic and career goals while in the community college here at uh, Houston Community College. It's uh, a nationally recognized uh, uh, program of students for student success uh, model, which came out of UC Berkeley. Uh, HCC adopted it initially in 2014. And, you know, once everything changed, it kind of went down. Uh, well, we, we, we didn't eliminate it. Well, well, I guess we did eliminate it, but then we brought it back. Uh, you know, everything was happening, the pandemic and all of that stuff, and we brought it back in 2020. Uh, and it has been doing extremely well. Uh, like I said, it initially started in 2014, and we, all, we had only like uh, 10 students. Uh, and it was really great because out of, out of those 10 students, eight of them graduated uh, with, within the time that they were supposed to. So that was really a great thing. But uh, since we've re, re, um, revamped it, uh, it's expanded. And we have over um, I think over 700 students right now across the system. How exciting. Yeah. But um, they the students enjoy working 
uh, with their classmates. It's a cohort uh, uh, situation. They work with their classmates, faculty, and, um, and support staff outside of the formal classroom as well. Um, it, uh, it helps them to excel uh, and it will develop better interpersonal and leadership skills for the students. It's a wonderful program. Well, I know how great those programs are. I came through a specialty student program like that myself in college. So I have a great appreciation for anything that helps boost our student success. Yes. So can you tell me about the mentoring initiative that comes with that? Uh, well, actually, we're, we're doing something different. We have mentoring with our faculty, uh, mm -hmm. but we also have the ambassadors, uh, mentees who are their peers, other uh, students who have already gone through the, the program, if you will. Uh, so um, these mentors that we choose or that, you know, help out, uh, they are there to support the students as well, to help them, you know, uh, through their journey of, of their career and their college um, life, mm -hmm. uh, introduce them to things, uh, you know, uh, expose them and just help them out. Uh, it's really a great thing. And it also is something good for the faculty to do for their uh Steps, you know, to help mm -hmm. students. So it's it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. So is Samantha, let's bring you into the conversation. How how do you feel the work study ambassador is is working out and, and how is it in action? Well, um, obviously, during the pandemic from the start of 2020, a lot of this had been occurring virtually, and a lot more of this will be occurring in the future and more in person, right? Because one of the central mm -hmm. goals of the Bridge Pente program is to set up a learning community and also a sense of family among the students, among the community. It basically is, is those sense of belonging, right, that allows students to persist and complete. Um, so what we are doing with the ambassadors is that, you know, we're thinking in multiple ways. How can they help them in terms of the classes they've already taken? Right, some of that peer to peer tutoring, peer to peer mentoring. How can they also introduce them to facets of the program that might benefit someone? One of the key facets is the ambassadors are technical, are, you know, work steady students. So they're getting paid to do this work, you know, and if for all the students that are in that program, they also have the capacity of becoming an ambassador representing the program and getting paid for it. Oh, that sounds great. And peer-to-peer -peer mentoring is the best because mm -hmm. students learning from each other, I use it in my class all the time, you know, because it's great when you, it reinforces your own education when you can teach it to someone else. So the program's also working on a newsletter? Yes. So we have two faculty that have been a part of the program, um, professors Michael Ramey and John Shaw, and they both are going to be putting together a monthly newsletter um, that will highlight culture, lifestyle, and key events that we're having. Once again, it's kind of tying into that, keeping this community going, letting people know what the program is about, and just, you know, ideally highlighting students. You know, one of the main things we want to do is highlight student stories as well, right? Um, to encourage others and just to, you know, let people know what the program is about. And then you're going to start a student organization, correct? Right. So that kind of ties in similarly, right? Um, student organizations, um, which are, I think, way more possible now that COVID is kind of waning and we're kind of more in person, those things. Um, those student, organiz student organization, both Sybil and I will be advisors for that student organization. And our goal uh -huh. is to have, you know, events, you know, student-centered events, and um, also a way for students to once again be together in person in the program. You know, you may not be taking a class with somebody else who's going to a class across the campus or institution, mm -hmm. from you, but you can connect with them through this program, through that organization. I think that's amazing. And then you have some some work minority initiatives that are specific to the program. So one of the things that HCC um, has done, right, and other institution is put together a lot of data around students, right, and who is persisting, who is ch who's having challenges, having some stumbling blocks, right, in completing their, you know, graduate degree, I mean, well, their associate degrees. 
Um, and what we have found is particularly a lot of minority students are not persisting, right? They're having retention issues. Mm -hmm. So we want to address that by partnering with uh, other institutions that are already doing this, one of which is University of Houston downtown. Um, there's other institutions across the city that are doing similar initiatives, and we would like to connect with them and serve those students because our ultimate goal is student success. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Dr. Samantha Rodriguez and Sybil Davis, co-coordinators of the Bridge Puente program, for coming on and talking to us. Will you come back and let us know how things are going in a few months? Yes, we would love to. I am so excited about this program, and I'm so excited now that I can also advertise it to my students because I had no idea about it. Thank you. So thank you so much, and we'll have more info uh, about the program in our post after the show. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks, Randy. And uh, thank you for telling us more about the Bridge Program. Okay. All right. We've got a special guest joining us for Film Friday. In fact, I mentioned at the top, he and I worked together a few years ago back in the news days. Now, Alex uh, Luster is with us this afternoon, this morning. And Alex, I'm reading through my notes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did you start in TV news when you were literally 14 years old? Yes. Um, my mom was interviewed by uh, a bunch of different TV stations at the time she was working for the tax office and she was the only employee that spoke Spanish and uh, English and was able to uh, present herself for, for the cameras. And she became friends with one of the TV station uh, photographers and reporters. And so I was intrigued and I, I just asked to meet them, you know, one day. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 you know, lo and behold, after, you know, with the, uh, some persistence, I was able to get an internship without them realizing how old I was at the time <laughs> uh, until they, they actually hired me as, as when they, they found out. But, uh, but yeah, I started at 14, wow. um, was fortunate enough to, to not do anything dumb and, and screw that up. <laughs> well, when I first met you, I think you were, were you working as an editor when I first met you over at Fox? Yeah, I was the morning editor. I believe I was either working the midnight to 8 a.m. shift. Oh, yeah, those uh, were good for days. the morning show. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, or um, or 4 a.m. to 1 p.m. So I don't know which one's worse. So Yeah, I know. I know. I used to tell my kids, and it was true, there was a time in my life where I didn't sleep for eight hours straight at all. I would my whole yeah. life would I think while I was in TV news, especially when you worked in the morning shift, you're you're up at ungodly hours and you got to be presentable. Yeah. And I would sleep at like four hour intervals and naps. That was my world. And then when you get out of news, I don't know about you, but when I got out of news and I stopped working those crazy schedules, it took me a couple of years to decompress. Yeah. Uh, oh, every time a hurricane comes, I, I have that that oh, yeah. like urge, yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna get called in. But uh no, I'm I'm Luckily, I've been able to stay home with the family and uh, watch everything on the news with everyone else. That's awesome. Now, let's talk about Stick 'em Up because I remember this project, but uh, tell people about it. So in 2008, I started to, I was still working at Fox. I was in the um, promotions department and I kind of wanted to do, I missed my news um, days and I wanted to do something uh, tell a story from a few different perspectives and not be one-sided. So I started off with a short film about street art. I got an in-depth in, in view of, of spe a specific uh, style of street art, but it's basically, instead of your traditional graffiti with the spray can, these guys would actually put a bunch of work into creating these yeah. posters and then glue them up all over town. So I was able to kind of follow them around and then it, it just, it just, up uh, into a bigger, uh, more intriguing story. So um, uh, with uh, one of our former uh, co-workers, Tony Reyes, helped me out um, in the edit. Yeah. He helped me kind of formulate a story. We put something together and it uh, we finished in 2011. And um, it's a project I'm very proud of. And it screened at the River Oaks Theater, right? Yeah, uh, we, sold, we uh, showed at the River Oaks and the, sold out the, the uh, 500 seat theater three times that's uh, awesome in one night um, yeah it was it was a night to remember well now you've got the story hive uh tell us how that came about and i know you just moved to a new huge uh soundstage studio but weren't you guys at one time located in the heights did i is that correct because i thought y'all were in the heights at one point 
No, no, we've always been in the East End. Okay, uh, okay. Myself, uh, Tom, Tom Gandhi, and Jenna Moreno were were uh, three neighbors. We kind of we met each other while we were working on our documentaries. I was working on Stick 'Em Up. They were working on Stitched. We we quickly realized we were neighbors. We started riding bikes, talking about what we were learning. Uh, in the, we all have a history of media, and we all kind of dabbled in the corporate uh, world for a moment. Right. Um, and so we kind of talked about video production that was, that was going on more, more in the, on the business side that wasn't being done very well. So we, we decided to take our story, uh, story making, storytelling skills and, uh, put together a company that, that focused more on good quality content, uh, for, uh, corporations. Um, we do productions for all kinds of different yeah. people, but, uh, but you know the major the major companies here in town hire us to help them uh, communicate their their uh you know whatever it is that they're working on it whether it's marketing social right. media um or just an internal communication you, you um, know and i you you mentioned something really important which i've always agreed with and, and quite honestly the jobs that i've had in communications it's because um, I was a storyteller at one time back in the news days you know and you can take that because Telling a con there's nothing like a testimonial to sell a product or a service and being mm -hmm. able to tell that story. I think, you know, with us being in news, that gives us a little bit of an edge uh, to doing that. Is that something you found as well? Oh, yeah. No, we can we can we're able to come in and just listen to the client's problem and 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 what they want to create. And we are really fast because of the 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 way we we are able to kind of tell stories we're, we're able to like help them find a way to connect with whoever the audience is uh through storytelling so yeah it's been really strong and it's it's proven to be um very uh impactful it's, to this day we still have not marketed once and we're we're doing very well as you mentioned we just purchased uh well in 2019 we purchased are uh, a 15,000 square foot warehouse, uh, yeah. old industrial metal warehouse. We pretty much revamped the entire building. We built ourselves an office and now we're in the final, uh, we're in the planning stages of uh, building out our sound stage, which is not going as fast as we uh, planned with uh, COVID and all. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we're, we're trying to uh, create a really nice sound stage. It, it will be one of the largest uh, sound stages in, in Houston. And I want to bring Randy into this because uh, you guys kind of work together on Swamp as well. Is that right, Randy? Yeah, I'm the executive director of Swamp, but Alex is one of my board members. And we count on Alex a lot, actually. Alex brought us one of our most productive partnerships with Houston Media Source, where he's also oh, yeah. a board member. But we do so much work with HMS. In fact, the summer camp that we just did at HCC, Todd, all of our gear came from Houston Media Source, and that's a direct result from the relationship bridge that Alex built for us with that organization. And I think, I don't know, Alex, about you, but I think you should be pretty happy about that. I think that's a relationship that's been working well. I've been excited to see. I, I didn't know it was working that well. So that's awesome. I've been, I've been we, watching everything and, and reposting as much as possible. Between that and the Orange Show training collaboration and the workshops that we hold at HMS, I would say that's our most active partnership. And that's as a direct result of your involvement, which is great. Hmm. And Great. pretty soon we've got a, a new, uh, some new stuff coming up, but we're having a board meeting soon. So you'll learn about it in the board meeting as well. So well, you're, you're, there's <laughs> just, I'm, I was so excited when Alex joined the bar. So here's what you should know. Our website was a wreck and Alex was like, look, I don't do websites, but I'll take it on. And he redid. I mean, it's just like when I really need something, I call Alex and it's super helpful to have that person there. Also, Alex, we can do almost anything, which is scary. Look, I know uh, Swamp has been very important, obviously, with giving back. But when you guys started the Story Hive, I know when you, you know, at one point I had an agency, a very small little agency I ran with my wife. But it was really scary uh, taking that step saying, you know what, goodbye for now, full-time paycheck. You know, <laughs> let's just go all out and give it a try. Now, it obviously, ours didn't work forever, but it worked for a while. But did you expect this to be something that was going to, I mean, it's a huge step taking that on. Did you expect it now mm -hmm. down the road that you guys would be growing this much? Uh, 
I mean, I wish I could say yes, that I, this is exactly how I planned it, but no, yeah. it's going way better than, than uh, expected. Um, I think the secret is to finding those, those uh, partnerships with people that, that sure. really kind of fill in, fill in the spots where you're, you, you may not be an expert at or, or whatever, but uh, between the three of us together, we, we, we really do, um, we, we accomplish a lot and really fast. And, and we do have tons of relationships over town, just, just like, you know, anyone in the news industry, you, you build, you build uh, contacts and relationships, yeah. you keep up with people and, and you just keep going. Uh, I think that's been the secret as well. It's just word of mouth, making sure you're always um, on the top of people's mind when they think of video production or whatever, whatever it is that you want to uh, uh, excel at. But yeah, Alex it's, it, it was scary and it continues to be scary, but it's we made it through the pandemic. So I think we're we're doing OK. You're doing OK. You're getting ready to you know do that groundbreak you know, on a huge soundstage. And you guys are off of Canal, correct? Yes. 4010 Canal Street, uh, just a little bit really close to the uh, old Maxwell House coffee plant. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that well. Alex Luster, the co-founder of the Story Hive, our Film Friday guest. Follow them in social media. Keep up with their stuff. They've got some cool things going on. Alex, good to see you again. Let's not wait 20 years. Um, you know, <laughs> we'd love to get you back on the show and, and let us know how things are going there. we got to create some partnerships that we can work with you guys uh, with HCC TV as well in the future. Thank you, you too. And, and thank you for, for doing this, uh, this broadcast that you guys are doing. This is awesome. Thanks, Alex. It's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, Randy, exciting stuff going on here. I, and He's, also, he has adorable kids. They're I know. Like, I've so seen his kids cute. on social media. They don't, yes, they are. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got a few announcements we're going to go over now. Mm -hmm. um, first off, we want to congratulate. Uh, you want to take this one, Dr. Francis sure. Villabun Glover. Named Aspen Fellow, the Aspen Institute College Excellence Program has named Dr. Francis Villagrin Glover for the new President's Fellowship for Community College Excellence. Only one uh, of 26 leaders in the U.S., she will learn from veteran presidents how to build momentum for re reform and student success. So congratulations. Congrats to her. Also, congrats to the UN Family Award winners. Uh, up to the minute, it's proud to say congratulations to one of our guest co-hosts, Dr. Natalie Garza, uh, the History Program Coordinator and Outgoing Puente Program Coordinator. She's received the inaug an inaugural UN Family Endowed Chairs for Teaching and Learning Excellence Award. The $5,000 grant will allow a digital history project that she's been working on, and it's an interactive map of Houston's Second Ward neighborhood. That's it's an so incredible, cool. yeah, it's a real cool project she yeah. has going on. Also, congratulations goes out to Dr. G. Raymond Brown, the uh, program coordinator for artificial intelligence of HCC's digital inform digital information technology center of excellence. His five thousand dollar grant will go toward his team of students creating an AI glossary for schools and businesses to better understand its terminology. Wonderful uh, award winners doing some great stuff here at HCC. I know it's amazing, and it, I feel like we need confetti because also Wednesday, August thirty first. Congratulations to our HCC Peace Officer graduates. The uh, ceremony is next week at the Central Campus San, G San Jacinto Auditorium, and we'll have more information about the specifics in the post. But congratulations to all those graduates. Okay, uh, one thing, a very important topic: HCC's Counseling and Ability Services are teaming up with the VA Mental Health Care Line to present suicide prevention in the veteran community. Uh, it's a very important subject. It's happening via a Zoom session. You can check it out noon to 1 p.m. Thursday, September the 8th. Uh, you can register for it. We will have a link in our social media post after the show. Mattress Max School of Selling, it's going it's bonkers. It, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, what can he not sell? Because now he's going to teach people how to sell. Six to 10 Mondays through Thursdays through September 27th at Gallery Furniture. And he's going to teach you all how to have successful customer service and selling. And I mean, honestly, if I had anything to sell, I'd go because that Very guy can cool. sell anything. 
Very cool. Uh, if you'd like to do that, these pro this this they they fill up very quickly for the school yes. selling. So make sure you register now. Okay. Uh, the Betacheck Orman uh, auction is coming up, and I know you are very familiar with this, and it goes I to help it. a good cause uh, because it's supporting worthwhile professional development opportunities for HCC faculty. Fun evening of bidding on great items for the great cause. Uh, Friday, October 28th at the West Houston Institute. We'll have a link for that in our post after the show. I love a good auction. We love a good auction. You know, they have some cool auction. stuff there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun, too. They've and the had, West Houston Institute such a great building, too. You know, they've had priceless paintings that have been donated by, like, college presidents wow. that they auctioned off for, you know, a few hundred dollars. I mean, some cool stuff. I'm, I, yeah, I saw something previously that I think I bought. It might actually be here in my house. It was a really cool vase that was yeah. awesome. So they got some cool stuff. Uh, make sure you check that out. We'll be yep. reminding you quite often of it. Uh, and also, uh, if you have students who are still looking to register for classes, we've got shorter sessions available, like uh, Second Start's going to be coming yep. up. Very short sessions. And But the thing is, Randy, they need to get to that and start registering now for it. Right now, we have online anytime, online on a schedule. We have hybrid, which is lecture, sometimes online, sometimes all in person, my personal favorite, and the hybrid lab, which is our lab, lab, laboratory studio classes. That's what I teach. And, you know, just we can fit your schedule. I teach a night class and I teach a morning class. So we have something for everybody. So go to hcc.edus and register now. Okay, Monday on the show, we'll welcome the new interim Open Educational Resources Coordinator, Dr. James Ross Nazal. Is it Nazal? Nazal, I believe. Uh, he will be here to join us to talk about those important programs like Z Degrees and free books, online books. And we've got a special guest from HISD that's here as well. Uh, which is super exciting. Any any news on HISD is always great to hear. And I yes. love the in, the the free books. My both my classes have free textbooks. It makes a big difference because I a remember huge years difference. ago when I went to U of H when I graduated from U of H. Oh man, can you believe it's like a long time ago? I'm not going to say. Oh, it couldn't be that long. It was You're a, a baby. Long, huh, Thirty years. Thirty years. Thirty years. Actually, this summer. I think I'm still older than you. I am. It's been a long time. Yeah, 30 years. So anyway, um, uh, but I'd spend like easily $800 to dollars, dollars back on then. Books. Yeah. And that was like major money back then. The now, inclusive access program yeah. is huge. So it's so a exciting. big deal. And yeah. uh, we're very proud to uh, to really, uh, HCC has been one of the innovators with that. I know like uh, Dr. Nathan Smith has done a lot of work on it and and a lot of them. So we'll hear about that coming up on Monday. All right, Randy, thanks for being here. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, everybody. All right. Thank you all. We'll see you next week, 10 a.m. live on Up to the Minute.